Hi everybody, it's EB here at Bunk Bed Homestead. We are a family of five living in a 900 square foot apartment and we homestead in our apartment to the best of our abilities. And today I wanted to share my first ever Azure Standard order that we picked up about a week and a half ago. We picked it up right before Thanksgiving um, and we went out of town, so I didn't get a chance to do a full reveal video, so this is that. So let me go ahead and show you what we got. I'm super excited and definitely, definitely would recommend Azure Standard. If you are interested in Azure Standard and what products they offer, if they deliver to your area and how to kind of get on board with all of that, I will go ahead and link a um, kind of a little description of it in the bottom as well as a referral code that you can use so that I get a referral um, credit. I would love that and we really appreciate that. So without further ado, I will show you some clips of us picking up our orders, very exciting, and then I will share with you guys my, my haul. All right, we'll be back in a sec. Here it is. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, so here we are. I'm gonna be like holding up stuff and showing you. I'm not gonna link it in the bottom for each item, but you can take a look on Azure's website if you see something that you like. Um, this is our living room, by the way. And this is how we store things in our living room that don't necessarily live in the living room. We have like sunscreen, all of this is shoes. My husband's shoes are up there. That's like computers, electronic stuff that we don't want the kids to access. And then this is like books, workout equipment. <laughs> It's all in the living room and out of sight most of the time, which is really helpful when you have a small space. But back to the Azure haul. So we do a lot of bread baking, um, gluten-free bread. And our family, when I make the bread, it's gluten-free, dairy-free, and egg-free. So it's a very specific recipe. Um, it's my mom's recipe. I'm not going to link it in this video, but I will down the line link it once I've perfected it for giving to people that have um, the egg allergy because we kind of do some funky stuff with that. But Anyways, this is sorghum flour. It's a staple and gluten-free flour blend, and this was the best price that I could possibly find, and it's from Azure Standard. Again, um, I looked on Amazon before ordering every single thing, and I looked at Whole Foods, and I looked, um, I think, on Sprouts, and just to make sure that I was getting the best deal. So this is definitely the best deal for sorghum. It's not a very expensive grain, but this is pre-ground. You can also get it whole, and it's a great like grain to have, kind of like a lentil, but you don't want the whole if you don't have a food mill. I've had to blend <laughs> sorghum in my blender and strain it because I didn't have the eyes to see that it was not flour. Um, organic coconut sugar. This here is five pounds and this is the best deal of organic coconut sugar. This will last us probably about two months. So that's the other item I'm happy about. Cassava flour. This makes the absolute best gluten-free, dairy-free, grain-free tortillas you can imagine. If you just add a little bit of cassava flour, like maybe a cup, with um, two tablespoons of oil and then water till it gets into that like doughy, floury consistency, roll it up, roll it out, put it on a hot griddle. It is oh so good. So we use <laughs> cassava flour specifically for grain-free tortillas. We love cassava flour. Um, I got some more sorghum flour. I think I might have gotten just two of those. Um, let's see what else we have here for the baking side. Tapioca starch. This, again, is another staple for gluten-free baking. Um, I use this in pizza dough, um, our breads. I use this in cinnamon rolls. It's also kind of like a thickener, so sometimes um, it's also related to arrowroot. Um, kind of, I think it's from the same plant, but a different part of how it's processed. So. Love tapioca starch. This one was, again, five pounds. Um, we don't go through this that often. I would say maybe like two pounds every month or so. So this should last a while. Very excited about that. Um, let's see, baking powder. I made the mistake of buying baking powder from Smart and Final and not realizing that it had aluminum ingredients in it. And so I definitely wanted to get an aluminum-free baking powder. This one is double acting. I have no idea what that means, but it was a really decent price. This is a pound. And this will last us um, probably a month. We go through baking powder very quickly. Um, the other one I got was five pounds. I wanted to make sure I liked this one before I like went all in and got the big five pounder. Um, kidney beans. I have never 
really cooked beans from like scratch, I guess. And I really wanted to try. So I got some kidney beans um, to see if I like making beans from scratch. They were really decently priced, really cheap and organic. So I'm happy about that. Everything I got was organic, by the way, like nothing non-organic in this haul. And it was the best price, sometimes even better than non-organic options at the store. Um, next thing I got was some red lentils. Um, we love lentils. We just don't cook them that often because only John and I will really eat them as well as Mason who eats everything. But, um, excited to use this. It was cheaper than the other like yellow lentils. And then let's see here. Oh, tomato powder. I have been seeing lots of, um, homesteaders preserving tomato powder online with their freeze dryers. We do not have a freeze dryer, but I really wanted a shelf stable tomato powder option to make ketchup. I've made that twice and it's been a flop, so I'm willing to try again because I hear that I was just using the wrong recipe. Really easy to make um, ketchup, add into soups or stews, um, or to reconstitute and make into tomato paste or into a sauce. So I wanted to try this out. Um, I thought it was gonna be a little bit more because this is a pound, but it's pretty small. I don't know how much this would make, so I don't think there's, oh, there's instructions. Four, pots, four parts water to one part powder. So this would make, I don't know, quintuple this, quadruple. And then for a tomato paste, it's a little bit less water. Next thing I got was cornmeal. We have a big cornbread family, <laughs> fan family, I guess. And I really wanted an organic cornmeal that I could make my own cornbread. My mom has an amazing recipe um, that we ate multiple times during Thanksgiving and it's just so good. She makes it gluten-free, dairy-free, and egg-free and it turns out fantastic. Um, hers does use sugar, so I'm gonna try to experiment and make it with coconut sugar. It'll be a little bit more brown than yellow, but I don't think it'll matter to the kids. They like the taste and I like it that it doesn't have a bunch of sugar. All right, next thing, corn masa. I have been loving making my own cassava tortillas and I wanted to experiment with making corn tortillas. First timer over here. I don't know how this is gonna go. I will <laughs> let you know. But um, I've seen lots of people making corn masa tortillas and I'm gonna give it a shot. So we'll see, it's a lot. This is like another four pounder. So I don't think we're gonna go through that anytime soon. Uh, let's see what's over here, okay. Yellow split peas, I really, really, really wanna try making split pea soup. I've never made it before, and these were really decently priced. This is like 40 ounces. I think it's like, I don't know how many pounds. It doesn't say, but um, you basically take three cups of water and one cup of this, and then simmer it for about an hour, and it will make like reconstituted peas, or not reconstituted, cooked peas, um, and then you can make it into split pea soup. So I'm gonna try this. Again, I'll let you know how it goes. All right, my most excited baking item. Can you see it back here? Ah, is organic brown rice flour. That is the staple, staple for any gluten-free baker. And this is what we use to make our sourdough starter is um, brown rice flour. So the issue that I'm having is the brand that I really like that's been working well for us, it's Anthony's and I get it on Amazon and it has continued to climb in price. It used to be like $6 for five pounds. It's now $17 some days for five pounds of gluten-free flour and it's not even organic. So I had been buying the organic version until inflation started and then I started going back to non-organic not very happy about that because of glyphosate and all the other stuff I don't want in a non-organic gluten-free flour that's a grain. So I'm going all in with the 20 pounds. I think it's 20 pounds. It's 25 pounds of brown rice flour. This is organic. And guess what? It was like 24 bucks. It was way less than anything I have ever seen gluten-free as well as organic anywhere online. So this is a big win. The only problem is I don't know where we're gonna store it. I didn't have a plan for that when I bought it. I didn't really know what 25 pounds of brown rice flour would look like. Now it's a small child in my living room, <laughs> but we've been storing it in the kitchen. So 
I'm very excited about this. I just have no idea how I'm going to store it. If you have any ideas, leave a comment. I would be glad to hear what you have done to store flour. Um, and then we're going to go to the frozen and like fresh section. So I did not get any fresh food actually. I just got frozen food and some shelf stable stuff. So these are organic frozen tri-colored bell peppers. And if you know about organic bell peppers, you know they're expensive. If you've looked at them in the store, they cost a lot of money. So I wanted to find an option that was easy, quick. I can dump this into a soup, a chili, stir it up for um, stir fry, and see how this works for me before I like went all in. We bought three of these. Tonight I actually threw them on Mason's Pizza and that worked out well. They don't really, um, like saute well they kind of get just mushy so I think I'll probably stick with using this in a quinoa dish I use that has a bunch of like taco seasoning and quinoa and bell peppers and chicken and beans and all that stuff so I think it'll turn out well there but I'm very happy with this I think it was like two fifty or three dollars for like a bag and I got three of these so it's a good price I'm happy with it I probably won't make it a staple but it's nice to have on hand the other thing I did not <laughs> I don't have a picture of for you guys because we ate them all, is organic hash browns. And these are a huge find for me because they're literally just little tiny diced organic potatoes without oil, without canola oil, without salt, without seasoning. And they are in the freezer and you just pull them out, put them on a pan for, I think we did like 20 minutes. And they are little tiny hash browns or you can add them to soups, you can add them to stuff. Um, and we ate them all so fast that we don't have any left to show you. So clearly that was a win. I will get those again. All right. I've been searching. I've been looking for BPA free tuna. And here we have, let's see where the seal is that I can show you it's BPA. It says gluten free, natural value, blah, 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 certified with all the stuff. All right. I can't figure out where it says it, but this is a BPA free can. And I'm very excited about that because um, when I feed my kids stuff from cans, I really want it to be BPA-free and I'm having a hard time finding stuff. So I just end up giving them the stuff that probably has BPA in it and I'm like barfing in my mouth, but they're eating. So I'm not like, you know, going to stop because we have the food on hand. I really want to find the sign that says it's BPA-free. I'll get back to you on that. Um, all right. I got... Molasses, black strap, unsulfured. This isn't black strap, just unsulfured molasses. We use molasses um, in the loaf that my, um, the bread loaf that my mom's recipe calls for. I can't, my words are getting mixed up. My mom's recipe has molasses in it for bread, and we use it for that. I also add this to gingerbread um, kind of flavored things like a loaf that I might make in the morning for the kids for breakfast. I love, love, love molasses cookies. So I use this a lot more in the winter time. Um, I love molasses in general. I would eat it just by the spoonful because it's my favorite. <laughs> but I wanted a lot of it and this was the best price I have ever seen for organic molasses and fair trade as well, which is important. So winter, winter chicken dinner, I will get this um, to fill up my small bottle that's easy for just pouring, and this will be my um, like refill. So I have that. And then the last thing is, I tried to order some curry powder that didn't come in on time, it couldn't be fulfilled. We use curry powder, like salt around here for different dishes, but I did get some onion powder. And this comes in a Mylar bag, which I keep on hearing about Mylar bags now that I'm getting into homesteading. And um, it's a lot of onion powder. But I've been finding that if I don't have an onion on hand to add into a stew or a soup, I don't have onion powder to like create that flavor profile that I want. So I wanted to try out getting some onion powder. Um, I mean, it's not in a can that's easy, so I have to find something that I can recycle and reuse that for. But overall, I'm very excited with this haul. I'm very excited that we did Azure for the first time. Um, I definitely think moving forward, there's some things that I'm going to be getting on a regular basis, like those potatoes, tuna. Um, I want to look into like ketchup and some coconut cream, stuff like that. Um, there generally is just like less ingredients in all of their stuff, as well as BPA free options for cans. Um, I have heard from people that they have to freeze their grains if they get whole grains um, because of 
the risk of, um, I think it's like, not earwigs, bull weevils, I think maybe, some grain weevils, some sort of bug that tends to only feed off of like whole grains. It's not going to be really in the milled. And sometimes the eggs will be in the grains. And if you freeze it ahead of time um, for like a couple days until it gets all frozen, then you can bring it out, defrost, and store it shelf stable. And you won't risk having your entire, you know, not crop, but purchase um, infested with those, those um, bugs, the weevils. So we don't have any whole grains that I bought today that would necessarily need to be frozen before stored. But that's something I'm thinking about because we don't have a large freezer. If we were going to be buying more grains from Azure, how to make sure that they're not going to become um, a problem if they're stored on the shelf and there's been a couple eggs from bull weevils. It's like totally something that actually isn't a big problem when you are grinding the grain, um, but and they're not a risk to humans. You just don't want bugs in your food. So anyways, this is my haul. Here it is. I need to figure out storage solutions. It's kind of just all sitting underneath one of our cupboards where we keep food, but I'm really excited that we did Azure. If you're interested again in checking that out, go below and you can find a link as well as the promo code that you can use to make sure that I get the credit because I love to share good things with people and um, it helps our family out um, anytime that we refer someone to Azure. Um, again, I was not promoted by them when I first started looking into them. I was just curious and now I'm on board and I love it and we'll definitely be doing it again. Um, but anyways, thank you for listening. I appreciate your time and hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day in whatever you're doing. May the Lord bless you and may you feel joy and peace today. Have a good one.